Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me okay in the back? All right, thanks. We are here today to celebrate the life of Steve Post. And on behalf of the family, I'd like to extend our welcome and our thanks for being here. My name is Ray Alley. I'm Steve's uncle. And I do want to thank uh, Jimmy and Scott for according me the honor of kind of officiating at Steve's remembrance today. It means a lot. Steve and I are obviously of uh, different generations. <laughs> right. Uh, but we have a lot of things in common, actually. We both like family. We both like the ocean and the shore. We both play guitar. And we both like a good party. You're going to hear some of uh, Steve's favorite music today. The music that was playing when you were gathering here was from his playlist on his mobile phone. And you're going to hear uh, other favorite tunes of his during the time that we are here tracing the arc of his life. These guitars here, by the way, are some of Steve's. Every decent picker has got more than one guitar, and he's got a few more than this. And one more honorable mention. On the, uh, the, the card you were given today with Steve's picture on it, that picture was taken by uh, Tommy and Trish Bonde. Uh, they went down and shot it at Nag's Head, uh, and it's so beautifully used on this card. All of you here have been touched at some level by Steve's uh, passage through this life. We're going to hear as time goes by this afternoon accounts of events shared with Steve, what he meant to people, and the many, many ways that he played a part in the life of, of his family, his friends, and his acquaintances. In circumstances like these, the, tragic circumstances, I guess. It's common for people to suffer and experience feelings of guilt and recrimination and things like what if and um, I wish and the if onlys. These things come readily to mind at these times. As somebody who's walked this path before, I can tell you with certainty that such feeling, feelings are not helpful nor do they lead to peace and understanding. Human decisions are very personal. Some are immensely personal, and we are not privy to those decisions, and probably we're not meant to be. We may strive to understand, but somehow we never do. Besides that, I don't think Steve would want us to dwell on anything like that. As a matter of fact, from a musical standpoint, there's a song that was published in 1945 that I think Steve would probably emphasize as the way to go. It's called, it, a couple of the lines in it go like this. You've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative, and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. And I think that's a hopeful and positive note, and that's how I think that we should uh, remember, praise, and cherish Steve today. Those of you that knew Steve well know that he had a great love for the Outer Banks. And he loved being in North Carolina. So therefore, the first song for our program today is James Taylor's Carolina on my mind. In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? Maybe just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind. Guess I'm gone to Carolina in my mind Karen, she's the silver sun You best walk her away and watch it shine Watch her watch the morning come The silver 
tear appearing now I'm crying Ain't I Gone to Carolina In my mind There ain't no doubt In no one's mind Your love's the finest thing around Whisper something soft and kind And hey baby The sky's on fire like a friend of mine to get me from behind Yes, I'm gone to Carolina in my mind The dark and silent late last night I think I might have heard the highway call Geese in flight and dogs at flight the Signs it might be omens say I'm going Forgive me If I'm up and gone to Carolina in my mind In my mind I'm gone to Carolina Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? Maybe just like a friend of mine I have been asked today to uh, reflect on Steve's life. Those of you that knew Steve well know he was not a religious person. However, he was, in my view, a very spiritual person. Some people seem to emphasize religiosity at some level as the measure of a person. But would it not be more accurate and useful to recognize spirituality at some measure as being at the core of personhood and therefore a component of one's character and a driver of behavior? Spirituality involves the recognition or sense of belief that there's something greater than yourself, something more than being human and living by what you can only see, touch, feel, etc. And that we are part, each of us, of a greater whole. Opening one's heart is an essential aspect of true spirituality. And that, fellow travelers, leads us directly to Steve. If ever a person existed that saw himself as part of a whole and recognized that all parts had value, and deserved his help, respect, and attention, it was Steve Post. He manifested unconditional loyalty to his family and his friends, and he was always there to help. He manifested that loyalty to his mother, his father, and his Aunt Nancy at times when their health was severely challenged. 
Uh, I know about the Aunt Nancy part uh, because my daughter Annette is her daughter. And when she was going through these serious challenges, Annette was working full time and she has her own immediate family to care for as well. And Steve stepped up to bat and did a lot of things like medical appointments and on and on and on, trying to smooth the path for members of his family. Annette naturally really appreciated this. And she thanked him profoundly many times. And one of those times he sent back a text. And this is verbatim. These are Steve's words. Annette, your mom is a connection to a generation that I've known, loved, and appreciated most of my life. I'd be ashamed if I did anything else. Let me know what you need. That is an exemplar of Steve's spirituality. How many of you here today were on the receiving end of Steve's acts of kindness and consideration? How many of you, when a situation in your life went pear-shaped, you immediately found Steve by your side, helping you to make things better or to pick up the pieces? Part of Steve's spirituality, I think, was his kindness and his serenity. Now, you may have seen sides of Steve that um, I didn't see, but in all the years I knew Steve, I never heard an angry word come out of his mouth. You're soon going to hear from friends what Steve meant to them and anecdotes that illustrate those feelings that they have for him. His acts and gestures of friendship and kindness are part of the essence of what we loved and admired about Steve. These, therefore, are what we should focus on as we remember him and what he meant to us. As we move on from here, from this point in time and space, there will doubtless be times when our thoughts turn to Steve, the most unexpected times that will happen. When that happens, remember him with kindness and a smile, certain in your belief that the world has been a better place because he passed this way. I've chosen a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. It has a lot of nautical imagery. Given Steve's love for the ocean and so forth, I thought it might be appropriate. It's called Crossing the Bar. The bar refers to a sandbar at the mouth of a harbor. And there's a reference to moaning of the bar, which is the mournful sound of waves lapping on a sandbar at the mouth of the harbor. So, crossing the bar. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full of sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our boundary of time and space, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. <clears throat> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start some of the musical portion of our program. Siki has been a friend to the boys. They're still boys to me. Uh, and the family for a long, long time. And she has consented to play a selection for us. And without further ado, Siki.
saw the land. When he took for the cold, to the land was forsaken. He put it all down as the progress of man. Thanks, Ziggy. It's been a while since I've heard that one. Beautiful thing about folk music is you can understand all the words. <laughs> right? Yeah, me too. All right, I promised that we would have an opportunity here for some friends to come up and talk about their relationship with Steve. And uh, I don't know if I've got the order right, but these folks have known Steve since middle school. That's a while. And it would be Veronica, Brian, Paul, Timmy, and Tommy. So we all are up here together because we felt like there was strength in numbers. <laughs> I need these guys. Um, my name is Veronica Weymouth, and I first want to start off saying how lucky were we to have Steve in our lives. Um, most of us can't pinpoint the first time we meet someone. It was 10th grade social studies. The teacher went around the room asking us to fill in the blank. It was love blank. So all the kids got up. Love is eternal. Love is blind. Love is love. Love is kind. So Mrs. Stevenson got to Steve, and in typical Steve fashion, he quotes a popular 1980s song by the Jay Giles band. Love stinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The class cracked up. And from that moment on, I knew right then Steve was cool. We make a lot of friends throughout our lives, but there's something special about your friendships from your childhood. Right here. They remember you when you were awkward and uncool. But quite frankly, Steve was never awkward or uncool. Someone recently told me they remember Steve because he was the first kid they knew with a jean jacket. But you can't talk about Steve without talking about music. Uh, I, show of hands, have you been to a concert with Steve? Have you heard Steve play the, the guitar? I mean, he was the music man. Jimmy and Scott said that Steve wouldn't stop playing until he mastered that chord. You also can't talk about Steve without talking about someone that's compassionate, empathetic, and caring. He was a kind soul. He was a caretaker to many friends, and of course his mom, his dad, and his aunt, whom he took care of till the end. So the, in a roundabout way, this is kind of a, like bear with me, this is a story. About 25 years ago, me and my girlfriend Susie Sharp and Joanne Holmes headed down to Nags Head for the weekend, and we ended up at the port call. Y'all know, everybody knows the port call down in Nags Head. 
And we ran into Steve and Tommy Bonday. 